Hey, you know I'm loving it, loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. So, so, so if you're loving it, you can't get enough of it. Then put the hand up high, right where the other is. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know you're loving it. So if you're loving it, you can't get enough of it. Then put the hand up high, right where the other is. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know I'm loving it. Are you loving it? Yeah, you know you're loving it. And if you're loving it, you can't get enough of it. Then put a hand up. Hey, this is Dr. K from the medical school, and today we're going to have our second lesson about chest x-rays. We're going to learn about how to identify cardiomegaly, as well as how to differentiate airspace versus interstitial lung disease. The outline for today is we'll go over the different shades of an x-ray and what they represent, cardiomegaly and how it appears on a chest x-ray, normal lung markings, airspace diseases and their causes, as well as interstitial lung diseases and their causes. So getting to the shades of an x-ray. The table here demonstrates the different tissues and objects that, that can be present on a chest x-ray and how they look. So metals, calcifications, and bones appear white. And again, metals appear to be very bright white, as well as calcifications. Bones tend to be more of a dull white. But anytime you see white on a chest x-ray, it's usually one of these three that are present. An example of a calcification would be aortic calcifications. You commonly see this in patients with coronary artery disease who do get a chest x-ray. There will be calcification present in the aortic knob. Two, we come to fat. Fat tends to appear gray and appears like many other soft tissues. Then air, air always appears a black on a chest x-ray, which is really important to identify, especially when you're identifying pneumothoraces. Finally, soft tissue. Soft tissue can range from dull white to gray on a chest x-ray. So here, take a moment and try to find all the different substances in this x-ray, and then we'll go over it together. So let's identify the basic objects. The most obvious ones here that are sticking out, these long linear objects, they clearly represent a foreign object and represent metal, indicated by how white and bright they appear on a chest x-ray. Only things that really appear that white and bright again are metal, calcifications, and then bone. Next would be soft tissues. So soft tissues here represented by the cardiac silhouette. As well, you can see here it is gray in color, and you can also see the soft tissue both in the upper abdomen, the liver area, um, as well as in the neck region where there's a lot of soft tissue. Then fat, fat will come and see in the axillary area, and it tends to be more darker gray than soft tissue. And then finally, the darkest color that you'll see on the chest x-ray will be air. And definitely when you're taking an inspiration chest x-ray, you're going to see a lot of black in the lungs because there's a predominant amount of air there compared to tissue. Finally, we'll identify bone. Clearly, there are ribs present in the chest x-ray, and that represents bone. Again, bone can vary from uh, brighter gray to dull white on the chest x-ray. So let's get down to identifying cardiomegaly. So what is cardiomegaly? Cardiomegaly means an enlarged heart. And I put this in quotes because the cardiac silhouette is composed of two things. One, the actual heart size itself, plus a pericardial space. Usually there is no real enlargement of the pericardial space, so the cardiac silhouette tends to just represent the heart size. But it's important to consider both these factors when we're talking about cardiomegaly. How do you identify cardiomegaly on a chest x-ray? Simple. Look at the diameter of the cardiac silhouette and compare it to the diameter of the thoracic cavity. If the diameter of the cardiac silhouette is greater than one half the size of the thoracic diameter, then you know there's cardiomegaly present. And you can easily do some chest x-rays by just taking your fingers and measuring the cardiac silhouette and comparing it to the thoracic diameter. This will give you a brief and easy way to identify cardiomegaly. Now what are the causes of cardiomegaly? There's some true and false causes. So some, a false cause would be the inability of the patient to take a deep breath. These commonly occur in patients who are obese, who are pregnant, or patients who have massive ascites. All these conditions put a lot of pressure on the thoracic cavity, preventing them from taking a deep breath. This, this causes the heart to be crowded 
and appears larger in diameter than it should be. Two is magnification. We talked about this in the last lesson, but that portable x-rays tend to magnify the cardiac silhouette, can sometimes produce false cardiomegaly. Another example would be pericardial effusions. So pericardial effusions can mask the border of the cardiac silhouette, making it appear larger. And then rotation, specifically leftward rotation, changes the way you're looking at the heart. And this could also cause false cardiomegaly. Now let's try to identify lung disease. But before you know what abnormal is, you need to know what normal lung markings are. Normal lung markings are white lines on the normal chest x-ray that represent blood vessels. They taper peripherally, meaning they may appear larger towards the hilum, but get smaller towards the exterior of the chest x-ray or the periphery of the lungs. Bronchi on a normal chest x-ray tend to be invisible, and we'll talk about when bronchi be start becoming visible and why they do. So in this chest x-ray right here, you'll see some long, very thin lines that start toward the hilum and extend out. Those are blood vessels. So how do we differentiate lung disease? Lung di disease can be differentiated in two categories. One, airspace or alveolar disease, and then two, interstitial and infiltrative disease. We'll go over both causes of these two categories and how to identify them on a chest x-ray. So let's talk about airspace disease. So airspace disease is generally represented by fluffiness, cloudiness, or haziness on a chest x-ray. The borders of this are really not clearly defined usually. We can see what's called air bronchograms. So when fluid or soft tissue starts surrounding the bronchi, which our air flows through, the normally invisible bronchus starts becoming visible, and they appear like long, dark, tubular structures on the chest x-ray. Examples of airspace disease include sarcoidosis, pneumonia, hemorrhage, aspiration pneumonia, and pulmonary edema. All very important diseases that you should be able to identify on a chest x-ray. So now let's take a look at an example of alveolar airspace disease. Here we have a very important chest x-ray. Try to think as we're talking about this chest x-ray, what's causing all the findings seen in this chest x-ray. So number one, we have diffuse haziness, no clear border present, or you can also otherwise state as fluffiness. That kind of identifies this as airspace disease. One very important feature that we talked about also are air bronchograms. And air bronchograms are present in this chest x-ray. I'll outline a few in these box right here. Remember, there are long tubular structures that are present and represent bronchi when soft tissue or fluid represents or places the surrounding tissue. So this chest x-ray represents ARDS, acute respiratory distress syndrome. The most common feature of ARDS is a PaO2 over FiO2 ratio greater than 200. This is a definite board question, definite shelf question. Make sure you know how an ARDS looks like. Bilateral diffuse haziness on a chest x-ray. Now we get to another example of airspace disease. Again, you can see fluffiness kind of diffusely uh, present. Um, no clear demarcated borders that are present. Um, here I've encircled an air bronchogram that's present again. Again, that bronchi that with the surrounding area that's replaced by fluid or soft tissue that is present. Um, try to take a look at this next example of airspace disease and tell me what you think is going on. Well, now that you have time to take a look at this, look, this is a more focal example of airspace disease. We have the disease mainly confined to this portion of the right lung. Um, and it actually right here represents an infiltrate. So we have an infiltrate there, we commonly think of pneumonia. But it's important to know where this pneumonia is. Is it upper lobe, middle lobe, or lower lobe? Key feature you need to know is, is the cardiac silhouette still visible? If the cardiac silhouette is still visible with an infiltrate in the right lung, then this has to be middle lobe pneumonia or upper lobe pneumonia. But in this case, we can tell because the area is middle lobe, right middle lobe pneumonia. If it was a right lower lobe pneumonia, the cardiac silhouette border 
would not be seen. And that's a very important point you need to remember because this will help you differentiate between the locations of pneumonia, especially on the right side. Later on in lessons, we'll talk about how to localize pneumonias. Now let's talk to interest about interstitial diseases. Interstitial diseases that break up into certain patterns. Generally, they're discrete diseases, meaning they're localized to one area of the lung, but commonly they can, but they can progress to most more diffuse patterns. So we break them up into reticular nodular. That means you see lines and dots on the x-ray. Reticular, where you just see lines on the x-ray, and nodular, where you see dots on the x-ray. So reticular interstitial diseases are commonly caused by pulmonary fibrosis, rheumatoid lung, interstitial edema. What these all have in common is that the soft tissue is either replaced by collagen or there's a lot of present of fluid within this soft tissue of the lung causing these changes on the chest x-ray. And you see all these diffuse lines everywhere. And it's really important to note the findings of these type of chest x-rays because pulmonary fibrosis is a very debilitating disease and people who get this do not have very good prognoses. Again, you in this x-ray, there's actually some very interesting findings. We have what's called curly lines. Curly lines represent the fibrosis that's occurring in the lungs. So there's curly A lines and curly B lines. Curly A lines are long lines that radiate out from the hilum. Curly B lines are small peripheral lines. So in this case, that is a curly A line present. You'll see a few of these throughout the chest x-ray. Again, here, more examples of curly A lines. Curly B lines are very small peripheral lines that are present that can represent interstitial disease. And if you have, need to have a magnifying glass, but in this chest x-ray, if you look very closely, they're very small lines toward the periphery that are not very long and very short, and they're called curly B lines. These are all examples of interstitial disease. Next, we'll go to nodular interstitial disease. Usually, these are represented by metastases to the lung or primary lung cancer in and of itself. Um, very easy to identify. So here clearly you see a large mass in that right uh, lung representing a likely met present. Um, you may see cavatory lesion sometimes that could also cause these same findings. Now let's talk about reticular nodular interstitial diseases. These tend to be caused by like sarcoidosis, silicosis. The reason is they generally start off nodular and then as they progress become more reticular in appearance. So the nodular formation you see these uh, sarcoid areas present, uh, mediastinal lymph nodes, and then it starts developing reticular appearance as the remaining tissue of the lung starts becoming fibrosed uh, with collagen. So let's go to our first example of a chest x-ray that you can try. Take a minute, take a look at this chest x-ray, pause right here. If not, we'll go ahead and identify what's going on in this chest x-ray. You diffuse haziness bilaterally. Um, there's really no focal findings. This indicates pulmonary edema. It's important to be able to identify this on a chest x-ray in any patient in the hospital. If your patient's short of breath, you always can consider Lasix to diurese them, but always figure out why they're having pulmonary edema. Is this a CHF F exacerbation? Is it just too much fluids? The second example, take a pause here and try to figure it out. Now we can go ahead. It's a focal haziness present in that right lung. Given the focal haziness, it's likely an infiltrate, specifically representing a pneumonia. We went over this as a previous example. If there's a cardiac silhouette present with this focal infiltrate, it's likely a right middle lobe pneumonia. And that's what we have here. Again, it's very important to identify pulmonary edema and pneumonia in the lung and be able to localize that pneumonia. But we will, in a later lesson, go over that, how to localize pneumonias on a chest x-ray, both PA and lateral x-rays. All right, if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Comment if you have any questions or any suggestions for any topics. Subscribe. And if you want, follow me on Twitter at iMedicalSchool, where I go over questions every day that will probably be valuable to you. This is Dr. K signing out.